walks forward and say the Serenus Lestia Classic field is set. They're ready. Racing. First of them away, catch Carter from the inside. Spice is right to jump well. London's image is going to pour the pressure on. And Wind in the Line is going to slip right in behind those with Cashel Palace. A length and a half, Sir Dream a lot being followed closely by Six Shooter, improving around the outside of Heavy Metal. Getting back into the field soon after the start is Earth Storm with a couple behind it as they go down by the 950 metre mark. And back there towards the tail, Maya Loha dropped out very sharply back with it as as well as hell of a goddess london's image has gone on with it and taken up the role of pacemaker at the 700 london's image led by two spices right down on the inside running third catch cutter a length and a half wind in the storm up fourth then sir dream a lot around them six shooter in behind them traveling okay cash hell palace but with no room at the moment hell of a goddess hugs the rail earth storm heavy metal back there and maya loha is last with 400 left to go london's image comes into the home straight and with a kick as well. London's image races away by four or five to catch Carter. Six shooter. Wind in the line now gets into the clear and starts the chase. London's image stoked up in front by Stevie Parnham. A hundred left to go. Wind in the line. Here's Cashel Palace. Cashel Palace is gutting them down. Going two to its one. Cashel Palace. Cashel Palace finished brilliantly to win it from either Wind of the Line, London's image and down the outside Earth Storm right behind those then. Hell of a goddess. Six shooter. Catch Carter Maya Loha was next home with Sir Dream a lot in that group. Then Heavy Metal further back and towards the tail end, Spice is right. Cashel Palace, Gia was travelling and running. Lucy Fiore picks up a double here this afternoon. Lucy at her best here, timing her run beautifully. London's image booting away around the corner with uh, wind of the line in pursuit but cashel palace once getting around heels and getting into open air started a really lengthened stride and in the last 75 was going three to their one and has picked up the sir ernest lustia classic this afternoon for trainer danny morton dan of course won this race with kiss on all four cheeks back in 2021 and he's also won it with uh, lusaha going back in 2017 so he picks up his third victory in the race and wins by a length in 122.91 second placing three london's image brave as there can be she has given it her all again wind of the lion third earth storm flooding home and finishing into fourth spot 10 3 1 and 7. i'd love to see a replay there there must have been an incident there there was a massive roar from the crowd uh, just after they got going by the thousand meters so I might not have been looking at that particular incident if there was one in actual fact but you could really hear the crowd groan and uh, I'd love to have a look at the vision there I could see Maya Loha uh, get pushed right back maybe that was the incident that they might have been reacting to but uh, this is a great result today for uh, Shane Stafford the owner of Cashel Palace Queensland based in the beef game and uh, by street boss out of Burgoyne Lucy Fiore second leg of a double beats London's image how good she has been Burgess Queen Stakes winner second in a Placid Arc fifth in a Guineas and now second in a Lestia Classic with uh, Ryan Hill preparing Steve Parnham in the saddle wind on the line third by written by from Mandalong Sarah Sean and Jake Casey Chris Parnham there aboard Okay, next event, the Ascend Trophies Jungle Dawn Classic at listed level for the Phillies and Mares over 1,400 metres and no changes to come. Let's go to Lockie Taylor. And uh, this is a big step up today for Cashel Palace, who's just been coming into her own, ran fourth in the champion Phillies, came back to 1,400 today. Uh, that's a great effort, uh, but she got a bit of weight relief and she was certainly suited by a, a, a hot pace. The Phillies have run 122.91 Lockie as we take it down there with uh, you and Dan Morton. Dan celebrating his third win in this race. Thanks, Darren. Yes, Dan Morton, he's had a stranglehold on this race over many, many years and Cashel Palace adds yet another win for his stable. Dan, you've always had plenty of time for this filly. Was it an afterthought this race or was it always on the horizons after that performance in the champion fillies? No, definitely 
you know, if, if we didn't, you know, going to start into the better races, bigger races, um, this was always on the radar. So, um, yeah, her run in the champion fillies was great, we thought, and the form out of that was great into the guineas. So, uh, yeah, they, they wound her out. Not that I'm a punter, but um, ho hopefully Shane Stafford over east at Owensbury has had a bit of a chunk of that, hopefully. She seems just such a versatile filly at an early stage of her career. She settled a little handier in her races before, but courtesy of the good speed, she was back in running, but always travelled nicely. Yeah, a beautiful filly, and I was just talking to BJ Pryor. Like, I think, I feel like next time in, she's going to be a, a really serious horse. So, um, yeah, a lot to like about her. How's the team feeling ahead of Saloon Bar's tilt at the Winterbottom? Yeah, we're very happy. You know, it's, uh, um, you know we're going in in great shape, so... Uh, he's probably stand him up a bit of a start, but he'll be rattling over some point. Fingers crossed, good luck. Thank you. There's Dan Morton after the win of Cashel Palace. Great to see her salute here for the first time at black type level. And here's Lucy Fiore catching up with Scotty for the second time here today. She certainly is. Lucy brings up the second leg of a double. Cashel Palace, Lucy. Gee, you would have been a good thing beat if you didn't get out because you were bolting so far from home. Yeah, once I uh, got to the 600, I was starting to... Um, I was following Win in the line and he wasn't really travelling as well as I would have liked him to be. And I was saying, I need to get out of here. <laughs> I'm bolting. Um, and yeah, thankfully, I just the way we cornered, I didn't lose too much momentum and she let down super. She went from a class one on Melbourne Cup Day into the champion fillies and she more than held her own behind Storyville. Yeah, she did. Um, I think maybe comparing the two, the speed in this race compared to the champion fillies, we weren't quite slow. Um, off the, the good tempo today, she had a lot more um, speed up her sleeve when it come time to let down. The difference being that that race didn't have London's image, and doesn't she roll them along? Yeah, she does, and um, to her credit, she was really tough, and um, when I straightened up and I seen that it was her there, I thought, am I going to run her down, or is she going to keep going? You know, uh, the mile back to the 14 would be really fit. Um, thankfully, it just, um, it just didn't run out the 14 as well as we did. Some of our Channel 7 viewers at home that may not have heard you talk about Rock and Rupert earlier on, what sort of chance do you give him in the winter bottom? Yeah, Ruffy. Like, I was really happy with that last run of his. Um, I don't see him out of place in the first four, four or five. Congratulations, well done. Thank you. There's Lucy Fury. She combines with Dan Morton and Cashel Palace to take out the Sir Ernest Lestier Classic.